with his mouth wide open. <laughs> Hey, what's up you guys, Shonimus Prime here, doing another Walking Dead AMC TV series figure review on the Series 5 Maggie Green figure. I picked this figure up at my local comic book shop, Coastside Comics, place to go if you're on the coast and you want comics. But if you can't find your Walking Dead figures at your local comic book shop, you can get them at Big Bad Toy Store. Big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. Pretty standard for the new packaging that we've been getting for the Walking Dead figures, very slim and you can see the weapons right there. There's Maggie. And we have the prison fence right over there. We got some crows flying around. It says Maggie Green with assault rifle, gun, and knife based on the hit AMC TV series Walking Dead, which is based on the hit image comic. And then on the back it says to see all our toys, go to McFarland.com. And then we have some links right over there. Here's some other figures from the wave. I already reviewed the charred zombie. I have Merle zombie. I did not pick up Tyrese, nor did I pick up Glenn. And we have Maggie right over there, and I already reviewed Daryl. So those are all the other series five figures. Maggie, to me, by far the hottest chick on the show. Uh, let's get to it and crack this figure open. So here we have Maggie out of the packaging, and I think she's a great looking figure so far. I really like the accessories that she comes with, and I think the body sculpt is dead on. Some paint application issues on the face, yeah, but overall a cool looking figure. So let's take a look at the accessories and then we'll take a closer look at the figure. So here's a look at the assault rifle. I like the paint applications and the sculpt on this. This is a cool looking assault rifle. A lot of little details right here on this, especially with all the little silver dry brushing, especially right there. This is great looking. It has this huge shoulder strap though, which is a little awkward though to be honest with you. I don't know exactly how to display this figure with this weird long shoulder strap. I don't know exactly how it works. I'm guessing, you know, just wrap it around here and it goes across forward and then she can hold it. So it's a little goofy, but you know, it's not anything that really keeps her from holding this thing. Uh, a little gripe of mine is that you can't really get her holding it with two hands without her hand just resting underneath right here. Like she can't really grip this part of the gun. I feel like, oh, I guess there she goes. It doesn't look terrible, but I feel like I'm going to stretch the fingers out or something and that would suck if it breaks. So I'm not going to leave it like that. And the space between the thumb and the fingers on this hand are definitely way too small to hold it over there. The handle part of the assault rifle fits perfectly into her right hand just as well it does for her left hand but the fingers do not go through the trigger hole. And here's Maggie's gun. Pretty nice looking gun. Nothing really too crazy or special about it but nothing crappy about it either. It's pretty good. Fits into her right hand nicely and it fits into the left hand as well with neither hand actually having the trigger finger go through the trigger hole. And then she has this knife which is really really cool. I really like the blood splatter on there. That looks great man. And the blood looks very realistic on this as well and I like the silver paint applications for the blade. Now Maggie barely holds the knife in her right hand. It's gonna slip out as soon as I shake it as you can see right there. But in the left hand she holds it just fine. One thing that's really neat is the riot gear zombie comes with the same knife that Maggie has. I believe in the show she stabs the riot gear zombie like right in the neck with this thing. So you can see the difference between the knives right here. They are very similar. Uh, they may have used the same sculpt. Actually, no, I don't think they did. The Riot Gear zombie blade is a little bit bigger, but it's supposed to be the same knife. I believe that's what happened is Maggie stabbed him right in the neck. Now the gun fits nicely in the holster over here, so you just slip this right in there, and that works pretty good. But the sheath for the knife is kind of weird. I mean, I do like the sculpting of it. I like these little silver buttons right over there, but it's got this open slit on the side, and you can't just jam it in above. You kind of have to like shove it in here sideways. It's kind of weird, man. I, I really don't know how to place this in here correctly. It doesn't seem like there's anything that opens up on this side of it. Actually, I've had some better luck with the curve of the blade facing outward, and speaking of curves, Oh my goodness, we'll get into that later, but let's look at the face over here. I think they actually kind of missed some of the paint applications on her face. Her eyes look a little weird. She looks a little derpy, right? I think it's the right eye. The sculpt doesn't look too bad. Actually, a buddy of mine, Mr. Phils, he has a buddy on Instagram that actually changed the paint applications on the face and it looks a lot better. But other than that, I think the sculpting isn't too bad. And for the most part, I really do like the paint applications on the figure. The face doesn't look too bad overall. And and I really like this hair detail and everything. They did some paint shading right here in the hair. It looks pretty good to me anyway. I think this looks all right. And then the skin has a nice flesh tone to it and she's dirty and everything. And I really like her green tank top over here. Has some paint variation in here. You can see the knot right there. And then you got some blood splattered all over the place. That looks really cool. I like how it goes from dark to light red. And the right arm looks great. This is awesome looking. I really like the blood over here. You can see the speckled little red dots all over the place right there on the forearm. 
That is awesome. The only complaint about this is this wrist over here. They have this added joint, which I don't think is very necessary. I love articulation, but the thing is the wrist moves side to side right here at the hinge. And it also moves at the elbow. So they have this added piece over here. It has no paint detail on it. There's no flesh tone there. The flesh tone doesn't match. And there's no red paint on it either. So that's a little frustrating. It looks so nice. And then all of a sudden the red just disappears. The left side, not so much red paint, but she does look dirty. And then these jeans look very realistic. I also like the belt buckle. This is really nice. It looks like it's really made out of denim and the texturing to it is very realistic too. She has a little bit of cuts right here in the denim. I think that's pretty nice. Now some of you may or may not know I've bragged about this but I got to interview Todd McFarlane over in New York Toy Fair and before we got to the interview I talked about my YouTube channel a little and as soon as I said Shardimus Prime he got it right away. He knew it was kind of goofy and everything and then shortly after we started talking about Lauren Cohan's ass and how she had a nice tushy is how he said it. He said that she had a nice tushy. He didn't really realize it until they got to work on this figure. And I had to say like, well yeah, that's really the main reason why I want to pick up this figure. And then we had to get to the interview and stuff and be serious. But yeah, so Todd McFarlane and I share that. Uh, yeah, we like Lauren Cohan. I mean, look at this though. They did a great job on these butt cheeks. She looks very, very nice. Very nice kick right over here and a beautiful cup right underneath right there. And it looks pretty screen accurate. And then the little added lines right here underneath on the thighs, so it's like those jeans are just like squeezing the hell out of them, you know? And I think that's just really nice. A little getting a little excited over here on the action figure, but it's based off of a real person who, uh, you know, who I like, you know? So why not? So we have these nice straps over here, some nice silver paint applications, and then I like the dirty grime that we have on these wrinkles right here on the lower part of the jeans. I'm not a big fan of these joints kind of taking us away from the reality of the figure. I think they could have used something smoother, but oh well. And she has has some nice boots too. Another thing about Lauren Cohan is that while I was looking online to see uh, butt shots, to see how accurate they were with this over here, come to find out that she has beautiful feet, man. Lauren Cohan, I love you. Uh, please don't hate me, Charlita One. Uh, Lauren Cohan, please fall in love with me. Uh. Hey. So the articulation on this figure is okay. Not great by any means. Her head moves side to side and it does not look up at all. You can get her to look down and she has a little bit of a head pivot, but a lot of it's really hindered by the hair over here, which isn't even really that long, but still it's enough to hinder some head movement over there. She does have shoulders that move outward and you can move them forward. I feel like you can't move them up any more than that though. Something could break. She can rotate right here at the elbow side to side and she bends at the elbow not even really 90 degrees and then there's this added wrist joint I talked about earlier and the wrist rotates right there at the hinge and it moves up and down at the hinge she has no diaphragm joint or anything like that but she does have a waist swivel so she does rotate over here nicely and she has some pretty decent hip joints she can move outwards that much at the hip and she can kick forward so that's as much as she can really move forward and she rotates at the hip as well she also has knees that bend at 90 degrees and you can get her to rotate at the knee. She also has boot rotation too and then that's it. Really wish she had some kind of ankle articulation or removable boots. So this Maggie figure stands at about 5 inches tall. And here she is standing next to the TV series Michonne figure. And you can see that Maggie's just a little bit shorter. I just want to do a quick butt comparison to Michonne over here. And yeah, Maggie turned out looking nicer. I mean, look at this. I mean, come on. Which one? Which one? And then here she is next to Daryl Dixon without chopper, so you can see how much shorter she is. I don't have the Glenn figure, but I think she's a little short for her character. I don't see Maggie as being a very short woman, and this makes her look like she's pretty short. And then to see how short the figure line is compared to your average 6 inch figure, here she is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. So to be totally honest with you guys, I don't think this is necessarily the best Walking Dead TV series figure that's come out. Uh, the paint applications on the face are a little bit ruined, the articulation on the figure isn't really so great. But because I'm a fan of Lauren Cohan playing Maggie, I always thought Lauren playing Maggie was hella fine, so I just had to get it for that. But otherwise, it's not really a must-get figure, and I'm just being a total pervert. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Please check out ToyNewsEye.com for the latest in action figure news and for a photo gallery of this figure review. Also, hit the like button if you like the video. Please leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I will catch you guys later. Peace. <laughs>
the comment button. Wait, comment button? <laughs>